now with Francisco Ferreira from Palantir. Okay, so, hi, my name is Francisco. I'm, I'm uh, from Coimbra, although right now I'm based in London. I'm, uh, as I said, from this company called Palantir. Uh, not gonna talk about it much, but it's a nice place. Uh, I'm here, uh, just to give a disclaimer, I'm here on my behalf. So I'm speaking my opinion. I'm not speaking the official opinion of my employer. So if there's any media people out there, I'm not speaking on behalf of Palantir. Uh, if anybody wants, my Twitter handle is fmsf303. And uh, I'm here to talk about functional JavaScript. Uh, I, just to have a rough idea, uh, to understand what kind of level I can go into, how many of here are familiar with functional programming? Can I just get like a wave of hands? Oh, this is cool. Like a, a, third, of, a third of the people. Uh, this talk is pretty much targeting uh, an introduction to functional programming using uh, JavaScript. And I'm going to be using JavaScript to uh, AS6 syntax, just also to get an idea. How many people here know about JavaScript 6? Cool. So, either way, just to, to, to give a quick explanation, uh, I'm going to be using mainly the, the new arrow functions. So, when you have a function that's uh, called like this, you used to do it something like this. Now, I'm going to be defining functions like this, okay? This is because we can store functions in a constant and we don't really need, and then you can't really monkey patch functions, which is nice. JavaScript, you used to do, be able to do very nasty stuff to your code. With constants, you can't. Uh, there's also one more thing. So I've been speaking at conferences already for some time, and there is one thing that I always tell people to never do, which is never do a talk where the talk mostly consists of live coding. And uh, that's actually what I'm about to do, and it's the first time that I'm about that, that I'll be doing it. So I should listen to myself better. Uh, either way, trying to spread a little bit uh, of functional programming. For those that are already familiar with it, I uh, apologize for the beginning. The beginning is mostly an introduction for the other people that uh, that have no idea about what they are doing. Uh, so. Let's start. One of the concepts that we have uh, around functional programming is, uh, or at least the reason why I really like it and I try to convince people like you to start using it, is that it's uh, really easy to test. It ma makes the code very maintainable. And uh, it relies a lot on uh, pure functions and higher order functions. So to start with pure functions, a pure function is something that exists in all programming languages is simply a function without any side effects. It's a function that doesn't alter any kind of state. It receives a set of inputs and uh, returns something based on those inputs. But it's nice because since it doesn't have any side effects, it is uh, very deterministic. Whenever you give, them, whenever you give a pure function is an, an input, you're guaranteed that you're gonna always have the same kind of output, which makes them really, really easy to test. So the basic example of pure functions is pretty much building a sum. So if you have, uh, uh, if you want to make a function that where you can sum two numbers, A and B, so we want A and B, and uh, we can simply return the sum of both of them. This is, a pure, this is one of the basic pure functions that you have. You simply give two arguments, we then can uh, test it, of course, and say, sum of two and four will be eight. Oh, sorry, it will be six. <laughs> <laughs> I really never done the talk with live coding, so I'm a bit nervous, I apologize for that. Uh, another example of a pure function is building uh, an art which simply negates something. And um, we simply pass, a, pass it a value and we will return the negation of that value. Again, this is a pure function, very small, or even something more, um, uh, a bit more complex, but still a single liner, which is check if something is even. Again, some examples from uh, Programming 101. 
and you can say, you can return if the number is zero. And this will give you if the number is even or not, and now we can do something like console log is even two, it should return true, and if I put something else, it should return six. Sorry, it should return false if I put a three here. So this is nice, these are pure functions. Pure functions aren't necessarily single liners. Uh, for example, if you've done uh, algorithmic programming, uh, most uh, algorithms are pure functions as well, they're just a little bit bigger. Uh, but they receive an input, they put an output, really fun stuff. The, um, the thing is that uh, what matters here is really that they should not have side effects, <coughs> which makes them very, uh, very deterministic. So let's uh, look at something, uh, something a little bit deeper. So having pure functions that don't cause side effects in an environment that allows high order uh, functions uh, or first class uh, functions will allow us to do some really interesting stuff. Higher order functions or first class are uh, functions that um, can be passed around pretty much. So for those familiar with JavaScript, you can, uh, functions are just internal stores in uh, a Nash map, which means that you can put them in variables, can do whatever you want with them. And uh, a good example of passing a function around is for example when you do Ajax calls that you pass a callback. But for those that uh, are not less familiar, we can build something like reusing the sum that we have here. We can, uh, for example, make a function called twice. This will be yeah, twice. What we want to do is uh, if we do twice five, we want to do something with it. So let's, uh, sorry, if we do twice uh, some function, we want to call that function pass one argument and spread it into two, into two parameters. So let's say that you have a number here and we want to, and we can return a function that will, where we can propagate the number two. So <coughs> something like this. This uh, will pretty much allow us to do some interesting stuff like reusing the other functions. So imagine that you want to build a function called double, which will double a value. So if I pass it two, it's gonna return four. If I pass it five, it's gonna return uh, 10. And uh, we can now start reusing functions. So the twice, what is literally doing is picking up, uh, it's, uh, sorry, I have this argument opposite. It's, pretty, it's returning a function that, uh, which is this function here that will return another function that receives a number and uh, will then pick this number and pass it into the first and the second argument. <coughs> this allows us to build a double, which will, we can say has uh, twice the sum. And now if we log it, again, we'll see double of three will be six again, or we can say double of nine which will be 18. So we pretty much reused the, the sum function and uh, propagated. This is, uh, sorry for the very basic example, but for those that never did functional, this is really the basic of the most basic examples where you can do in higher order functions, which is you can start passing functions around and then you can, it enables you to do some really interesting stuff like carrying, like uh, making the code more readable by not having huge callbacks one inside another. And it's quite nice. So uh, another example that we can do here is for example, reuse the not function that we have on the top and the is even to build a function that checks if something is odd. And for this, we're gonna use a concept called curring, which is, um, even more functions that call functions, it's easier to show. So imagine that we have, uh, let's build a function that we can call, let's uh, organize this. So let's uh, build up a function that uh, receives one function, uh, sorry, that receives two functions and it will apply the first function to the, to the result of the second one. 
something similar to this. So let's call it apply, uh, or chain. Chain probably is a better name. And uh, we can say that chain is a function. It, re it uh, will receive a function has a parameter, and then it will return another function, which also receives a function, which will uh, return another function, which receives a number, which uh, then uh, will apply the, f the the number to the second function and the second function to the first function. So actually, this probably is easier to read if I do this. And then we can apply the first one to the second one and to the number. Is this clear or am I jumping too far? I'm a bit afraid for the people that know functional this probably is easy, for the ones that don't probably is not. Should I go stop and talk about this a little bit? <laughs> okay, so chaining pretty much will allow us to carry a bunch of functions around. So in this case, we can uh, just uh, chain uh, the not and the even together because uh, a not number is the contrary of even and we can pass not has a higher order function, we can pass is even again has another function, let me just create the is odd. And uh, this pretty much will create a function called this odd that you can now call with a, no a normal number and it will return pot and it, it will return if the number is odd or not. So is odd, two should be false, and if and three should be tr should be true. <coughs> yeah. Okay. So so far this is working. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the concept, one of the base concepts in the functional programming is exactly this, which is you have uh, functions that take functions as arguments, and especially have functions that generate other functions. So you can start building uh, really interesting stuff. Uh, there are lots of libraries that have tens of these already built in. Here now we're going to give a, a quick, I'm going to just give you a quick example of how you can actually apply this a little bit in the, com in the normal world. For those that do JavaScript, uh, you're probably familiar with the following code that I'm gonna add. Let me just organize this a little bit. I'm gonna pretty much do, put the code here to do an Ajax call and uh, do the same thing. So something that would look like this. Uh, imagine that we're doing a get into getting a user, for example. And that username has, uh, the user that we want has a username Let's go with Maria. And uh, nor in normally, then you would, it, you would get a callback from this with data from that user, and you could do, for example, uh, and you could do, for example, I don't know, set the page title to be the full name of that user. So this is something pretty common in most day-to-day -day apps. The thing that me particularly that I don't like here is that we're passing an anonymous function here, which probably could be reused somewhere, but often people t that start using anonymous functions, you'll start seeing the code become a pyramid because you can easily find people doing an anonymous function inside an anonymous function because they are chaining callbacks and it starts getting really ugly. So instead, let's use, again, higher order functions. So we can go and say, uh, yeah, we can go and say, for example, we can, let's build a, a function that extracts this full name so that you can reuse it. For example, it can be, imagine that you have a file which is uh, a library to get user properties. And, uh, sorry, and uh, inside, inside that uh, library, which is a JavaScript file that you, that you import, let's call it like this user properties.js, you have a function called uh, uh, get uh, full name. So something like const get full name, which uh, returns you again a function. It's always the same now. We always return functions that re receives the data that we want to, that we get from uh, somewhere, which is the date that represents the user. So in this case, let's say it receives a user and uh, returns the, um, 
the function that we pass with the username applied to it. Okay, we can now go back into this and we can uh, refactor it to be, to remove this uh, ugly callback that we have here. We can simply remove it and uh, right. we can simply remove it and now pass, uh, instead of having this thing here, we, given that this function can be called here, we can just remove this part. And uh, actually, let me put just an enter here to make it easier to read. And you can say get full name, set page title. And hopefully this makes the code easier to read. Also, because this code makes it um, easier to, to reuse, which means that once you write this, if the, for any reason the logic of how the user is structured change and we no longer have full name, it, and you keep using this function of get full name, you pretty much then have a single point that you need to modify it. And also, uh, it becomes a little bit readable for uh, someone that just drops in, which they can see get user uh, with the username Maria, and then just get the full name and set the page title to be that, which is nice. Uh, I'm using JSBin. JSBin doesn't, well, I don't have jQuery in it, or, so I'm just gonna come remove Sorry, actually comment this out to avoid it breaking. And put some semicolons here to so it stops complaining about it. One error and errors are gone, cool. So this is how you can normally apply, uh, how you can normally apply a bit more functional to normal world. But now let's uh, go back into some examples. Imagine that you have, uh, one of the things that functional is uh, used a lot is uh, that is used a lot in functional is carrying functions. We already gave a quick example here on the chain where you call the, a function that returns a function directly. But let's uh, rebuild this sum that we have here to be carried. So this, instead of uh, having it passing like that, it would be something like const sum. You receive A and you return another function that receives B. And, you and then you return the sum of A plus B. Still, the sum will still work. And uh, we can say console log sum A, B. So in this case, I actually need numbers here. So this will return us five. So clear, run. Wait. I forgot to save it. Sorry. So. Uh, returns five, and this is what we called carrying. Uh, let's uh, see how we can, why this can actually be cool. Imagine that you want to build uh, now a collection of functions that perform static uh, transformations to stuff. And for now, let's uh, build it for just for numbers. Imagine that you have a function called add 10 that simply adds uh, 10 to whatever number you want. You can now reuse some to, to generate you the function that's gonna add 10, and then you can say console log uh, sum five, and you're gonna get 15. The reason why this uh, is useful, wait. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, the reason why this is useful, it's because uh, Often we are doing transformations, for example, on lists or transformations on maps with uh, functions that uh, require callbacks. This is especially true if you're building one-page apps. This is happening all, all the time. And uh, which means that now, for example, we can say uh, we can have a list and we can pass one, two, three, four, four. There is this function called map which will apply a callback to it and return uh, everything to, and we'll apply that function to all, every number of the list and return a new list. If we now come here and say add 10, we will apply this to every single one of them, which is nice. The, again, it's making the code testable. We can now go and, and build a unit test specifically for this add 10. We can start reusing it. You can start making a library of things that sum stuff, for example. And uh, yeah. I have one minute left, which means that I have uh, a couple more examples that I wanted to go through, but I'm not gonna have time. Uh, so let's go with just uh, one uh, last one. 
imagine that uh, uh, actually imagine that you want you imagine that this you thought that this is actually useful. Curing is an awesome thing actually to explore, and uh, there are tens of JavaScript libraries out there that mm -hmm. apply that have functions like this. One of my favorite ones is this Ramda, which uh, has a ton of uh, it has a ton of uh, this doesn't work in very small scripts which has tens of uh, functions like that. Nothing new, you have lodash, underscore, a bunch of them that all do these kind of things. The thing is that every single one of these is curried, which is really nice. You can see here the examples on the side. They carry every single one of them, which means that if you want, you can start building collections of libraries, which is really cool. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty much out of time. Uh, I hope this was useful. Uh, can I get a show of hands of people that found this useful? Oh, actually, cool. I was expecting that nobody that said that they were doing functional actually would raise their hands, so thank you. Uh, anyway, if you have any questions, I think now it's five minutes for questions. Feel free to shoot them. Thank you for showing that uh, Hollywood version of developers is crap. So, questions? No one? Uh, yeah, I don't have internet. I'm going to put these examples on GIST and I'll tweet it to commit portal just so that people can capture them if they want. But I need internet first, so afterwards. Hi, Francis. Here. Yeah. Thank you for your presentation. I got a question for you. Uh, one of the issues with new types of JavaScript things is Internet Explorer and its friends. Uh, when do you think we will be able to use this in production environments? Uh, maybe you already use it. Do you have some kind of trick, some kind of library that could allow us to already use this and uh, use it with uh, older uh, browsers? Okay. So first, uh, first of all, you can already use this. I'm actually using this notation, but all these functions, even these functions, fun Sam, for example, you could have done it like this, which means that you can actually already use it. I was just trying to propagate JavaScript 6 syntax so that people can start getting used to it, but you can actually do this. So you can already use it. It's just a matter of syntax. Regarding using actually JavaScript 6 or a 6, uh, actually the answer is already on the screen. If you see over there on the middle, there's a bunch of very, very good, very optimized transpiler libraries that even for applications that go on really large scale. For example, before I was working for eBay, we were deploying code to really millions of users at once, and we were using Babel to transpile. So Babel will pick up uh, AS6 code and convert it into AS5, and it's uh, safe with Internet Explorer. Well, older versions of Internet Explorer is safe-ish, but it should be fine. Thank you. Anyone? Yeah, I missed the return here, sorry. I think that's all. Yeah. Awesome. Yes? No? So thank you, and uh, any questions, please <laughs> <to> pick up. <laughs>